morning, everybody. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Roma Land. It's a blessing to have you here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Um, let's stand up and get right into worship. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, and thank you for uh, your goodness and uh, your love for us. I pray that you'd bless this time of worship, bless this Sunday morning. Uh, thank you for it, in Jesus' name. Sing, I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is the the king is alive. Sing, I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. With everything inside of me. I raise a hallelujah. And I will watch the darkness.
darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, living in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make it, we make it, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is.
For you have never failed me yet Promise Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your this is my confidence You never fail me yet. I know that I know that I know that I know My heart will sing your praise again. Jesus is still enough. Oh, Jesus, you're still enough. You keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise. Adam, that was great. That's the way to start your morning, amen? amen. Just, just reminding ourselves of who God is, making him bigger than who we are and our situations are. And so I'm so grateful to be able to worship the Lord like that this morning. 
Well, welcome to Calvary Chapel Roma Lynn, and we just want to welcome all of you here this morning. Glad to, that you're here with us, and we'd like to welcome anybody that's here for the very first time. And, and if that is you, we'd like for you to just simply, we want to acknowledge you so if you can raise your hand. Anybody here for the very first time? Okay. All right. All right. I see a hand back there. Welcome. I see some hands. Good to have you here with us this morning. Glad you have joined us in this time of worship outside here in this beautiful morning and beautiful day in the city of Romaland. So, so good to have you here with us. So this morning, uh, if you have your bulletins, and you should have them, they were on your seats, just simply really quick, let, just to go right through them, if you open them inside, again, there's a prayer request that you can simply fill out. So if there's something heavy on your heart, something that's been on your mind, uh, right now would be the time to be able to write it down and to be able to hand it to the ushers afterwards. And so also there's a prayer list that we continue to lift up the needs here at Calvary Chapel Romulan and for the ministry of U-Turn for Christ. Also on your left-hand side of your bulletin, we got weekly schedules. And so I just want to remind Monday nights, starting at 7 o'clock, we'll be having our marriage study once again. And so uh, it's been a great time. And if you are uh, married and... Uh, and you would like to come and be encouraged, like the rest of us are, come and join us at 7 o'clock. And then we have this one announcement. It's called The Return. The Return for the Nation of America. Come back to the National Global Day of Prayer. And so that's going to be taking place even tonight at 6 p.m. And so we want to encourage you to join us, but not only tonight, but for the rest of the days until October 5th. And simply, we're just going to give come before the Lord and just pour our hearts out to the Lord and that he might hear us and heal our land as well. And there's also other announcements. You can look in there and read them. And with that, I'm going to ask the ushers to go ahead and come forward this morning to receive this morning tithes and offerings. So blessed to have our pastor, our senior pastor here this morning. Amen. God is a good God, a miracle God. And so, so blessed to have them here once again and be able to come up and share the word. Well, with that, let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for what you are doing. Well, Lord, do it again. Do it again, Lord. We've seen you do it many times, not in our own lives, but in the lives of many people. And so, Lord, we come in faith to you, to the almighty God, and that's who you are, Lord. We put our trust in you this morning, God. With every situation this morning, that we might be able to open ears and hearts to be able to hear and receive of every word that you have for us this morning, Father. And so, Lord, may you have your way in this morning. Lord, we lift up these tithes and offerings, Father. We just pray that you would bless them, Lord, and that you would use them to further your kingdom, Lord. And we, Lord, we pray for those that give, Lord, in faith, God. We pray those that give online, Lord, we pray that you would bless them, Lord. And so, Lord, we commit this morning to you now. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. 
shadow There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up Coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't break down Coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up The wall you won't keep down together up here since then you and I have both almost died <laughs> and it's good to be here isn't it <laughs> amen <laughs> what a blessing oh listen what a blessing it is to be back thank you first of all and foremost uh, for all of your prayers uh, but Peggy and I can't stop with just your prayers there was dinners and desserts and banners and cards and just the love of God coming through all of you uh, during our difficult time of getting through the COVID and uh, we want to make sure first thing to be able to thank you all for all the love that was sent and shared uh, with us during this time so bless you all uh, for that good morning and good to be here it's good to be able to welcome those that are here for the first time we would love to be able to make contact with you and and share we really do uh sense and and feel that this is a family here at calvary chapel roma land and so we'd like to introduce you to some of your family members uh if that's possible afterwards and so uh, if you're here for the first time, welcome, and uh, whether it's a short period that you're here with us or you decide to make this your home church, we want to welcome you and be able to uh, acknowledge you and be able to get to know you. So uh, please, afterwards, after service, come and say hello so that I can introduce you some of the other family members that are here. Uh, there is a, a very special time going on right now in our nation. For those that haven't heard and aren't aware, there's a, a big push for prayer right now uh, with Franklin Graham leading a, a, a crusade of thousands yesterday through the Washington, D.C. Mall uh, and stopping at different monuments to be able to pray for different things for the leadership of our nation, for the nation in unity and at whole. And uh, Peggy is there 
uh, with Cindy, our overseer for the Women's Ranch, and uh, one of our cousins, and a, and a few of the U-Turn for Christ uh, facilities from the East Coast and the South joining them to be a part of that uh, prayer rally. And so uh, I, I decided uh, last week to make sure that you got flyers to be able to start a prayer time. Uh, many churches around the nation for the next 10 days are joining together to just pray for our nation and its leadership. And so last evening we had a great time. It really was a special time of of kicking that off and opening up the church for prayer every night at six o'clock for the next nine days uh, there will be a pastor that will be leading us in prayer uh, in the fellowship hall and so you're welcome uh, to come we'd love to have you come uh, last night was a sweet time of not only prayer and worship but a sweet time of testimony and uh, some of those that and were called on and got to share and some that just stood up to to give testimony of what a miracle god we serve and how good it is to watch him uh, do miracles in our day today so i want to begin this morning with you and in, uh, inviting you to come out for that prayer time between six and seven for the next 10 days as we join with the other churches around the nation and leaders in, uh, in the church to be able to offer this time a special time of praying for our president, for his cabinet, for the nation at large. Well, if you would turn in your Bibles to the book of Daniel, we'll continue as we do picking up where we last left off, though it was now a month ago that I was uh, with you to be able to do uh, chapter 5 in the book of Daniel. We're moving to chapter 6, and I've got to tell you what a great place it is for me uh, to be able to come back this morning uh, with this passage before us, because very much I felt like I was thrown into the lion's den as uh, I was going through that difficult time of dealing with the COVID, uh, a period that I wasn't sure whether I was going to live or die a couple days in that period. Uh, it, was a, uh, it was a difficult time to be able to not have any strength and to be able to to know that I was fully dependent on the Lord again uh, in my life several times now. The Lord has been the miracle God that he is to be able to bring me through those periods. And this was certainly one of them once again. And that's where we are this morning, finding ourselves in a very familiar passage of scripture and the story of Daniel in the lion's den but i want to make sure as we begin this study because i think it's also important that we recognize this is not a fairy tale this is a real story about a real man who was a prophet of god being miraculously saved by god in closing the mouth of lions as he was thrown in to that dungeon and we need to hear that because all too many times we've read this story, and I have to admit that I have at times in reading this story to my children acted like it was a, a fairy tale. It was just a story. But this is real life, and this is a real God, and he's a miracle-working God yesterday, today, and forever, the Bible tells us. And we're going to read about this miracle-working God that we serve this morning remember that the last time that we were together uh, daniel was giving the interpretation of the writing on the wall to Belshazzar, and the king was found wanting and lacking and his kingdom was to be conquered by the medes and the persians the bible says this in chapter 5 and verse 31 and 30. it says that very night Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, was slain. And Darius the Mede received the kingdom, 
being about 62 years old. And so the last time we were together, we read through chapter 5 and studied how Daniel was miraculously allowed by God to be able to interpret the writing that was on the wall and deliver it in boldness to the king who would be then overthrown and the Medes and the Persians would move in. And that's where we pick up the story now in chapter 6 where the Bible says this. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps and to be over the whole kingdom and over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give an account to them and so that the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. And so we begin this morning in remembering that the Babylonians were conquered by, uh, or Israel was conquered by the Babylonians. They came in, they took the brightest of the men captive with them, and they took them away that they might help run uh, the country, or if you will, the new kingdom that was being established. Some 40 years later now, the Medes and the Persians come in and conquer the Babylonians as the Lord would allow for them to be conquered by. And the one that would conquer was Darius, who was ruling over them, the Bible says here. Most scholars believe that Darius was the son of King Cyrus, who was really the king over the Medes and the Persians. And it was he that placed his son over this area of the new kingdom of the Medes and the Persians, the area of Babylon. In chapter 9 of Daniel, the word says, In the first year of Darius, son of Ophiris, of the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. The Bible just says that he was placed in that spot, that he wasn't the conquering king. So Darius one of the king's sons is placed in that position of power. No matter really, what really matters is here that we see that three men were set up to help rule over the people, one of which was Daniel. And notice with me again, it says, Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And so once again, we see that it is God in Daniel that is allowing for him to be recognized and that has him standing out and above all of the others that were helping to govern the kingdom. And I just want to make sure that we hear that because it is always God's chosen that have the Spirit of God that stand out and that are elevated, if you will, to positions of authority and allowing them to be able to use their uh, God-given abilities for God's glory. And that's why Daniel is put in the position that he is, because he has made a decision to be able to bring God glory and not try and take the glory himself. That's a message that we all need to hear, that it is for you and I as we have the privilege of being recognized by others because of the God in us, that we make sure to give God all the glory and all the honor that he deserves. Well, look at the plot against Daniel as we move on in verse 4. The word says, so the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find no charge or fault because, look at this word, we need to underline this word. This is the word that you and I are going to be accountable for one day, standing in the presence of the Lord because he was faithful. Because he was faithful. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. 
Then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel, listen to this, unless we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Have you ever been the target of jealousy? And somebody being jealous of the position that you've been given by the Lord, Daniel, is simply being faithful. Look again, the word says, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful. He was faithful in the job that Darius had given him to do, placed him in, and to the best of his ability, he was doing that job. And yet, the other satraps, the others that were in charge, were filled with jealousy, and they hated him because of him being such a standout. Rather than being on the same team with him, and listen, this is important because we find it in the church as well. Many people jealous of others that get put into a place. God gives those to a position. And they get jealous of somebody being placed in a position or being used by God in a powerful way being used by God. And they try and find fault in that person rather than recognize that we're on the same team and that we ought to be cheering them on. We ought to be celebrating how God is using them. We ought to be looking for how we can come along and support them in the manner in which God is using them. And so we need to be careful because we're all prone to jealousy. The Word of God says this in Proverbs 27, 4. It says, Wrath is cruel and anger a torrent, but who is able to stand before jealousy? Daniel is now probably 80 years old, church. Should have had the respect from those that he was working and serving with for his faithfulness, but rather he is hunted by them. Look at how we are going to go on the hunt for Daniel. They, they make the decision, if, the, if you will, that they can't find fault in the way that he's serving and the manner in which he is living. And so make sure that you get this in this passage. It says, we shall find a charge against Daniel unless we find it against him concerning his God. They had recognized that Daniel was faithful to his God. And unless they could find fault, they could not nail Daniel, for he was obedient to God rather than to man. You know, one of the things I thought as I was reading through this passage of Scripture is, Lord, let me be that, like Daniel. Wouldn't it be cool if people looked into your life and the only thing they could fault you for was being faithful to God. The only thing that they could find against you is how faithful you were to the Lord. Faithful in this. Faithful in being a student of his word. Spending time with the Lord in his word. Being able to grow in your spiritual awareness of his word so that you might be able to live by it, first of all. And then to be able to share it with others when they come into your circle of influence. So important, the Word of God says, to be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the Word of truth. Are you faithful to the study of God's Word? Secondly, are you faithful to prayer? Are you faithful to being those that are just committed to the Lord and recognizing that it is in that sweet communion that we have with our God that he showers down wisdom upon us and gives us peace in our time of need. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, Call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. And faithful to being those that share your faith, faithful to the study of the word, faithful to being in communion with God in prayer, faithful in doing what God has called us to do, and that is to share his word with others, to share the simple truth of the gospel 
that many that know their sinners and are in need of a Savior might come to know him in a real and personal way. I remind you of Matthew in chapter 28, where the Lord says, Go therefore, not stay seated in the chairs that you're in in the church, not stay comfortable in being able to just speak to those that are your brothers and sisters in the Lord, in our communion, if you will, of the faith here at Calvary Chapel, Romaland. But go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to deserve all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Let us be like Daniel. Let us be known for being faithful and having integrity and being in love with our God. Well, verse 6, he goes on, it says, So these governors and satraps thronged before the king, and they said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. All the governors of the kingdom might want to underline all the governors of the kingdom and the administrators and satraps and counselors and advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute that <clears throat> and to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days except you O king shall be cast into the den of lions now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which does not alter. And therefore, King Darius signed the written decree. Now, the word of God says that all governors of the kingdom were in agreement to sign uh, this statute. But we know that Daniel was one of the top three and was being considered as the top counselor in the whole kingdom, and we know that he did not sign this agreement, that he wasn't a part of making it up. He would have never done that knowing his commitment to the Lord. But the rest of them figured out a way to be able to tickle the king in his pride. Be careful of that. Be careful when someone comes wanting to try and tickle your pride as they present some offer before you. They came and they said to the king, look, we've made this decree up. We think it's good for you, O king. May you be the one that is worshipped in the kingdom and that no one else worships anyone else or any other god. And that you alone for the next 30 days would be the one that all look to. And so as they tickle the king with his pride and trap Daniel at the same time in his faithfulness to God, we need to recognize that much of that same temptation is going on in our world today. The tickling of ears. I said the other night that I believe one of the greatest problems in America today is pastors that are not willing to speak the truth to allow for men and women that come under their congregations to be brought to a point of having to make a decision on whether they would be obedient to God or given to the flesh. And I see that throughout our churches today. And not to be judging others, but to be able to look at the simple way in which many people that call themselves Christians have now agreed with those that are living according to the world rather than according to Scripture. I think of those that are in the position of being able to vote right now and make a decision whether we'll vote for a president and a Congress and a and a, um, and a, no, I'm thinking about the, the Supreme Court justice that are going to be approving them. 
the Senate, <laughs> thank you, the Senate, those that are in government, that we must make sure are representing us and our beliefs in the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to make sure that we hear this once again because I think it's also important. We're going to be handing out next week uh, some paperwork to be able to help you look at the different people that are running for office and what they believe in, what they stand for, so that you can go down, study them, and make sure that you're making a biblical choice in who it is that you are placing your vote on the ballot for. We noticed that this, this year, just a month ago, we saw one party completely remove God out of their national convention in speaking to the country. And another party make sure that Jesus Christ was brought up with almost every one of those that spoke at their convention. We need to recognize that just as Israel was taken into captivity because of their moving away into adultery and worshiping false gods, one of the biggest of the false gods, Baal, was worshiped by offering babies to the, to the false god and being burnt to death in his hands. We need to recognize that we're a nation that needs right now to return. And that's why the name of the whole movement of this prayer is return. We need to return to God and to move away from the adulterous living that we have allowed to be able to take place. You and I need to be those that are prepared to make a stand like Daniel did. Whether it's received well from our neighbors, from our family, from those we work with, that we go to school with, those that we have recreation with or not, that we need to make a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ in the manner in which we vote. Very important decisions that we have to make on whether we are going to be those like Daniel that are obedient to God and his word or whether we will be given to the heir of man. So Daniel is thrown into lion's den. Look on with me at verse 10. It says, Now when Daniel knew the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since his early days. Daniel was not going to give into man's ways rather than to God's. Notice as was his custom in his early days. So important that we see Daniel's ways were established long ago. Early on in his childhood, he was established in the things of God and the ways of God. And so when the test came, that foundation that he had allowed him to stand and to stand boldly against the things of of the world. How important is it for us to be able to train up our children in the way that they shall go, Proverbs tells us. In chapter 26, the word tells us, and when they grow old, they will not depart from it. In Ephesians, the apostle Paul picks up that theme, and he says in chapter 6 and verse 4, and you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. You and I need to recognize as parents how important it is for us to be able to raise our children in the ways of the Lord. Last night in our time of prayer, special time of prayer, I told those that had come that when Jesus Christ was on the cross and he looked up to heaven and said, into your hands I commit my spirit, O Lord, that that was actually a prayer that was taught by Israel parents to their children 
before going to bed at night. They would pray, Lord, I'm about to sleep, and I can do nothing about my breathing while I sleep. It is only you that I commit my spirit into. And before the Lord would go for his last time of prayer before the Lord God Almighty as he was about to die on the cross, he said that prayer that he recited, I'm sure, all of his life as Mary and Joseph brought him up in the ways of the Lord. We need to be those that are training our children in the way of the Lord. Notice a few more things that are here. He says, and in his upper room, Daniel went to pray. And it's important for us to recognize that Daniel's prayer was one between him and the Lord. You and I need to be those that really consider and establish a private prayer life with God Almighty. And to recognize the privilege that we have to be going before the Lord God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and being able to have conversation with him, to give thanksgiving, and to be able to bring petitions. Look at it, it says, Daniel said, he prayed three times a day. As, as busy as we are, sometimes we say, man, I just got busy and I, I, I wasn't able to spend the time in prayer. Listen, Daniel was one of three in charge of the whole kingdom. How busy was Daniel? He was being considered to be the guy in charge of the whole realm of Babylon. He probably was pretty busy in taking care of the duties that had been beset upon him. And yet the Bible declares very clearly that Daniel went three times a day to make sure that he spent time with the Lord. And then last, Daniel gave thanks before his God. He prayed and he gave thanks. Or Daniel recognized that petitions and prayers work together. And that you and I know when we pray that we're bringing first our thanksgiving last night was so incredible to be able to hear different people stand up and, and to pray. And to be able to speak out with thanksgiving what our God is doing in their lives. And then others to petition God for difficult things that they're going through, even in the midst of a possible leukemia situation in our body that we need to be praying for. Incredible times of petitions and thanksgiving being given together as we commune with our incredible God, miracle-working God. Look at verse 11. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king, and they spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any god or man within 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, This thing is true according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which do not alter. And so there was a known, if you will, at the time, that with the king of the Medes and Persians, when he signed a signet ring stamped on that, on that petition or statute, that it could not be changed by anyone, not even him. It says, so they answered and they said before the king that Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, does not show due regard to you, O king, or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day, and the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself. And he set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. He continued to think about, he knew Daniel was a man that served his God, that loved his God. And he didn't think through before the pride allowed him to sign that petition. And now as the other satraps that are jealous of Daniel bring this, this accusation against him that was true, 
Daniel praying to his God three times a day. The king is disappointed in himself. He stays up all day and all night trying to figure out how he could get out of it, how he could release Daniel from being thrown in the den of lions. But he could not. And as the sun went down, it says to deliver him, these men, uh, then these men approached the king and said to the king, No, king, that it is the law of the Medes and Persians that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. Oh, how ugly jealousy is. How ugly jealousy is, and it raises its most vicious head in such severe ways. Here we have the men that wanted Daniel's position. And they wanted his position enough to find a way to throw him into the lion's den that he might be devoured by the lions. For what? For simply being faithful as God had called him to be. And after setting him up in the first place, and that's the kind of evil that jealousy brings. They come before the king and say, Look, king, you have no choice. The decree has been written according to the Medes and the Persians. And so the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, will deliver you. What an amazing part of the story that we come to. Where the testimony of Daniel was so strong that the king looks to Daniel and he says, Daniel, I can't save you. I saved, I signed the, the decree into order and I cannot stop it. But Daniel, your testimony is so strong in front of me that I believe your God can save you. Let me just ask you this morning, is that your testimony? Is your testimony so strong that others around you look into your life, they see your life, and they just go, man, I, I want what you have. I, I, I don't know what I got to do, but what I know is that you live at peace even in the midst of the most difficult times. What I know is that there's a joy that's about you that's contagious, and that I want to be around it, and others want to be around it. Is that, is that the testimony that you have? Because that's the testimony that allowed for the king to be able to look into Daniel's life and say, even though I can't save you, I believe. I believe that your God can save you. Notice with me, that the word says here that Daniel was faithful in serving the Lord continually. Continually. I think it's a word that we need to pay attention to. It wasn't that Daniel served once in a while. It wasn't that he was faithful every now and then. It was that his faithfulness was day in and day out in serving the Lord and his testimony had been so powerful, the example of his love and his belief in God Almighty shook the nation and the king who was in authority. Verse 17 says, Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. The king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet of the, his lord's that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be changed. It's an interesting part of the scripture here is the king comes over and he seals the, the wax around the stone that would have sealed that cave or that cavern. And he sealed it with his own signet ring. I personally believe that he sealed it so that nobody could destroy it, nobody could get in and to somehow kill Daniel, but that it would be sealed so that his belief now in Daniel's God being able to save Daniel would happen as he came back in the morning. Look at what takes place, verse 18. Now the king 
went to his palace and spent the night fasting. And no magicians were brought before him. Also his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of the lion. So he doesn't sleep all night. He fasts. I wonder where he learned that. The testimony of Daniel was strong. He fasts all night. He spends the night awake because he is so concerned for Daniel. And early in the morning, early in the morning, as soon as it was morning, the king rushes to the lion's den. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions? Once again, the king is crying out to Daniel. And I want to make sure that we recognize for the second time that scripture, this is God writing through man. That for the second time, it's important that we understand, we study, we read, we're serious about the study of God's word and every bit of it. But when he repeats himself two times, we need to take very serious note of it. And once again, we have that word continually. It is important for us, church, to be those that recognize God has called us to continually be given to him. Faithful in serving him day out, in and day out of our lives. So he went with the lamenting voice and he cried out and he called to Daniel, Hey, Dan, did your God save you from the lions? And the word says, Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. What an amazing part of the scripture again. The king lost his sleep over having to put Daniel in the den. He felt terrible. He made the decree and he stuck by it. But I love this part of the scripture because it is that Daniel, in his God-given position, in his continually serving the king of kings, he comes with a heart of forgiveness and love for the king. It's like he says to the king, Oh, king, I'm not mad at you. I know they tricked you. I know that you believe in my God and that you said before I was thrown into this den, I believe God can save you. He says to the king, Can you imagine saying to someone who threw you into a position to be killed by lions, devoured by lions, Oh, king, live forever. Daniel saying to the king, I know that you were tricked. He says, my God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. You might want to underline those words. It is spoken to me so loud and clear. Jerry Brown, are you found innocent? before God Almighty. And also, O king, I have done no wrong for you. Now, the king was exceedingly glad for him, commanded that they should take Daniel out of the den, and so Daniel was taken out, out of the den, and no injury was found on him, because, underline this, he believed in his God. Daniel was found innocent. What an example for all of us. And then the working miracle God that we serve, church, shut up the mouth of the lions. And pay attention to this because it's also important. This is the miracle working God that said he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I believe that as we look at this, we need to remember it's not a fairy tale. It's real life and death. My God has sent his angel to shut the mouth of the lion. And God stepped in because, the Bible says, Daniel believed in his God. Just as so many of us have seen miracles happen and take place in our lives because we have believed in our 
God. We need to remember that our call is to put our belief in him and to watch his miraculous miracles take place all around us. But not only to watch, to then give testimony of the miracle of God. I believe it's so important for us to give testimony. I remind you of a verse that Pastor Johnny Reno put to music when I went through double bypass some years ago. The word of Son of Isaiah it says in verse 26 and verse 3, You will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon you, because he trusts in you. Church, I believe us giving testimony of the miracles of God is also important. And I want to give testimony this morning just for a moment. As I was laying in that chair, the doctor friend of mine from childhood and playing ball together in high school, a brilliant man has now become a very well-known doctor in the area, head of the coronavirus task force for Riverside County, personal friend of mine that looked in on me three and four times a day the whole time I was going through the sickness. But there were two nights that I wasn't sure I was going to live. Two nights that I asked my wife to stay awake with me because I was afraid to go to sleep and thinking that I wasn't going to wake up if I did. Not that I was afraid of dying, because I know the Lord Jesus in a real and personal way, but that I felt like the Lord was saying to me, just be at peace and trust me. I have much more work for you to do. And yet, I didn't have the strength to be able to reach up and get a glass of water. My wife had to bring it to me and get in my face and tell me, Jerry, Dr. Bob said, if you don't drink, you're going to die. And I began to drink water as she brought it before me. I was touched by God. I had an incredible doctor friend in prescribing all the right medicines and, and, and watching over me medically. But I know this, that my health came from God. And I believe that my health came from God because of the prayers of the saints that were lifting me up. And I give glory and honor to the Lord for his touch on my life and allowing for me to be here this morning. And I believe that it was a miracle touch from God. I'm 63 years old. I had heart surgery and I have diabetes. And those three underlining pinning equations or issues lead to death with the coronavirus in many cases. I believe that it was a miracle touch by God that's allowing for me to be here with you this morning. And I believe, church, and I tell you this, I tell you this because I think it's also important that we give testimony of the miracle touches of God because we get encouraged by God being a miracle-working God today and Him allowing for us to be able to see His miracle works as we move through our lives. So interesting how God gives us peace in the middle of difficult times of our lives and then brings about the miracle. And I believe that we need to give those testimonies. We heard some of those testimonies last night of how God has touched lives in a miraculous way, saved lives in different manners, allowed for families to be put back together, marriages to be saved and put back together, houses to be saved, jobs to be saved, our children and our grandchildren to be saved. We need to speak out the miracle touches of God in our life and acknowledge him for the miracles that he performs. Well, we find Darius honoring God, verse 24, and the king gave a command, and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the pit. Notice once again the miracle working God as he, these same lions. Some want to say, oh, the lions were just fed and so they weren't hungry. 
No, the Bible says immediately after Daniel comes out of the pit, Darius gives the command to throw all the evil men that, that put him up to this, that tricked him and their families into the lion's den. And the lions devoured them, the word says, before they even got to the bottom. Then King Darius wrote, to all people, nations, and languages that dwelt in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which not be destroyed and his dominion shall endure till the end. He delivers and rescues, and he works signs and wonders in the heaven and on earth, who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. And so this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian, the miracle working God, completes the miracle of this story by transforming a pagan king into being able to recognize, honor, and then call his whole kingdom to fear and tremble at the God of Daniel. What a great ending to this part of Daniel and how the miracle working God is honored by a pagan king. Church, we need to listen and learn some very important lessons this morning. And the first is that faithful living is what God has called us to. We need to be those that are serious about our private prayer life that it might establish us in uh, times of difficulty and trial. We need to believe without question the miraculous power of Almighty God to be able to move on the earth as he did even in the time of Daniel. And we need to look forward to the rewards, the unexpected rewards that come from simply being those that are committed to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And lastly, please share your testimony. Allow for others to be able to hear that they might be impacted by the testimony of the miracle-working God in your life and that the unbelieving world, even as Daniel's unbelieving pagan king, would come to know our God in a real and personal manner. May we be Daniel's in the fallen world that we live in today. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. We thank you for your incredible word. The reminder to us that you are a miracle-working God and, and such a powerful working God that, that we ask that you would just be with us today. Help us to be faithful, Lord, as Daniel was. Help for us to be those that are standing strong, being bold, believing in your miraculous power to get us through the most difficult of times. Lord, may you be honored and glorified in our lives today. And may you help us as a church and as a people, as individuals, to be able to look at how it is that we can affect the world around us for your honor and for your glory. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just one more thing, church, before I turn it over to Adam and his leading us in worship. What a blessing that is, Adam, to, to have you here. And that is that in the midst of this return, this time of us moving into a serious 10-day every night time of prayer, let me once again invite you to be here. It's going to be a special time because I know that wherever two or more God's in the midst of us and he's going to be with us as we cry out to him. 
But there's a table over here that Jazzy and Michelle, some of the girls are going to be there. It looks like Wendy's maybe over there. We're going to have some of the ladies that are there that have the prayer changes things. I told you that Peggy was in Washington. They were able to be able to put banners up throughout the whole walk and pass out thousands of prayer changes things, signs and bumper stickers and, and uh, t-shirts and people were recorded on, on uh, all kinds of TV and, and interviews that, uh, that were promoting and wearing them. But we as a church know that prayer changes things here and we want to make the prayer changes things signs and stickers and whatever else is over on the table, a donation, whatever it is that you can afford or not afford. We would like for you to be able to have those signs to put them up in, the, in your yard, to be able to have them in your window or in your car, to allow for people to know that we have a God that's alive and that he is waiting for his children to be able to cry out to him. And so would you stand with that and we'll cry out to him in prayer with this song as Adam leads us. And if you're in need of prayer, if this morning you're here and you've not committed your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe you've been around church a long time, all of your life even, but you haven't been serious like Daniel. You haven't been bold like Daniel. You haven't been faithful like Daniel. You want prayer for that this morning. We'll have some of the pastors, if you'd come up, pastors and your wives, <coughs> and have some of the pastors and their wives uh, be able to be up here and available for prayer right now as Adam leads us in this last song of praise. May we recognize we're singing these words to the King of Kings. But we're not just mimicking words that Adam is leading us in. We're not just mimicking words with others around us. We're crying out to the God that created heaven and earth and has the power, the miraculous power, to be able to bring change through our prayers. So let's pray as we lift this prayer of music to the Lord. Pastors, if you'd come, that'd be great. Oh, man. 
Sunday and a blessed week.